just like the Canon EOS R, the Nikon Z6 and 7 resulted in a lot of crying from people on forums and blogs when they were first released. And just like the EOS R, I felt confident that they would be pretty fantastic if one actually used them instead of just reading the spec sheets. Fast forward two years and I asked Camera Doctor in Stockholm if I could borrow one for a couple of weeks. Because now when the Mark II versions are coming out, it might be time for me to hunt for a bargain Z7. And here are 5 reasons why. First of all is the button layout. Nikon really knocked it out of the park when it comes to using the limited space on such a small and compact camera to the fullest. There are buttons for everything, but without feeling cramped or sacrificing the grip. And somehow they also managed to leave space for the next thing I want to talk about, the displays. If you follow me you know that I hate fully articulated screens, but I love tilt screens. And I also have a soft spot for top displays. This has both and I love it. If I could have wished for an improvement it would be a Fuji style horizontal tilt, but it's fine the way it is. The touch display is also sharp and clear, so is the EVF, no complaints. Thirdly, we have a feature that I always point out when it's included in a camera. The highlight weighted metering mode. This is a feature I use all the time. To really take advantage of it, I like to be able to quickly switch back and forth between the metering modes. Sadly, Nikon abandoned the physical metering dials some time ago but the touch controls makes it pretty quick to do anyway. Next I want to mention the lenses. Just like the Canon EOS R, you can use the older DSLR lenses, but with that said, it's nice to be able to buy one or two decently priced primes in the native mount. And Nikon was in my opinion very clever about it by releasing a line of f1.8 primes. I've been testing the 85mm and 24mm and I must say they are both excellent. They are well built, weather sealed, quick, sharp and have a lovely rendition and bokeh. The 24mm is a given if I decide to get into this system. This leads us to the fifth and final reason why the Z7 is on my radar. The image quality. Its 45.7 megapixel sensor is top notch, and not just because of the insane resolution and croppability. With such a high megapixel sensor, I expected low light images to be very fragile, but they are actually much more pushable than expected. It's not that big of a sacrifice. The video quality is more than adequate, it's not film like and cinematic like the old D750, which I prefer. But if you are more into super sharp 4K for a video-ish look, then this has you covered. I've used it for some B-roll at work and I had no complaints. And the in-body stabilization is one of the better I've tried outside the Micro Four Thirds system. That's it, last complaint I want to mention is the card slot and no, I am not talking about it only having one, I couldn't care less about that, but it's an XQD card. Not a big deal, just a little less convenient than SD. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram. Until next time, goodbye.